Hey Sumners, what's going on? My name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for our latest episode of Korean Builds. This series goes over the latest builds, notably the ones from overseas on the Korean server. However, we do cover builds from anywhere, since there are innovative players across the world coming up with new OP builds to abuse. We'll cover builds for all five roles, so make sure you stay tuned. Also, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content like this, and let's get the video started. To begin, we'll start with the top lane builds. First on our list of new builds is one for Malphite. While this one is still pretty tanky, it takes a surprising twist as we find players building Malphite as more of a fighter tank hybrid. This is something new as we've seen full tank Malphite and AP Malphite in the past. However, even full tank Malphite deals significant damage and this build sacrifices little to no defensive stats for a significant boost to his damage output. First, let's run through the runes. Take Grasp with Undying, Demolish, Second Wind, Overgrowth, Presence of Mind, Coup de Grasse, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. His items are Divine Sunderer, Defensive Boots, Thorn Mail, Force of Nature, Titanic Hydra, and Gargoyle Stone Plate. For your first item, you'll build a Divine Sunderer which provides ample health and sustain, as well as a significant boost to your damage output. The Ability Haste makes a huge difference as well. It allows Malphite to deal more ability damage and more importantly, get his ultimate back faster. The bonus penetration it provides also makes it so that he continues to deal some more insane damage, even well into the late game. He is one of the hardest hitting tanks, as well as one of the hardest to deal with. Next, we have a build for Victor. We've seen a build like this used in the past, but essentially is getting a run back this time around. A tanky AP hybrid build makes Victor much harder for divers or assassins to take out, while still leaving him with enough damage to hard carry fights. That being said, let's run through the build. For runes, take Grasp and Then Dying, Demolish, Bone Plating, Revitalize, Mana Flow Band, Scorch, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. Grasp and Then Dying adds some extra sustain as well as poke damage that Victor can use to bully out enemies. Since he's ranged, he's able to safely activate the Keystone, and then poke his enemies with the Empowered Auto for some free damage. It also gets pretty oppressive, especially when combined with his Q Shield, bonus damage, and even his E's long range. After pushing lanes in or bullying out his opponents hard enough, Victor can take a big chunk of health out of his opponent's turret with Demolish, building an even bigger gold lead. His items are Frostfire Gauntlet, Sorcerer's Shoes, Demonic Embrace, Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff, and Zhonya's Hourglass. It's a pretty straightforward build with the exception of Frostfire Gauntlet. This item alone gives Victor the survivability that he needs, while also granting him an impactful slow to either chase or kite enemies with. This patch is certainly going to feature a ton of new builds or strategies. If you want some help learning to play against them or learning what they are, make sure you contact one of our coaches over at ProGuides.com. We have experts for all roles and champions, and they have helped countless players hit their ranked goals, and you could be next. Anyway, that covers the top lane builds, so we'll put a recap on them for the screen one more time for you. Take note of them, and let's talk about the jungle builds next. To start off the jungle, we have a new build for Vi. While it's an aggressive one, it still provides Vi with plenty of defensive stats, allowing her to be a formidable fighter that the enemy team cannot ignore. The biggest things to note are her items, so let me give you a quick rundown of the build. For runes, take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Sudden Impact, Ultimate Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Health. Make sure you don't forget Ultimate Hunter. Vi's ultimate is crucial and amazing for solo queue, where teams aren't always going to be ready to help out the poor victim of it. For items, build Blade of the Rune King, Defensive Boots, Frostfire Gauntlet, Wits and Death Dance, and Guardian Angel. Again, you are still plenty tanky with this build, but with the combination of Frostfire Gauntlet slow, as well as some big on-hit damage from Blade and Wits End, Vi will melt through squishies and even tankier foes like Butter. Next for the jungle build is a new Lee Sin build. First are his runes, which are Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight, Double Adaptive Force, and Health. You have absolutely no issue clearing the jungle, so make sure you take health for the value it provides in the late game. His items are Kempunk Chainsword, Defensive Boots, Black Cleaver, Immortal Shield Bow, Death Stance, and Force of Nature. Immortal Shield Bow is a powerful item on Lee Sin as it not only grants a sizable amount of damage, but also provides a literal life-saving shield. As you finish out the build, you'll gain more health and even attack damage, adding to the amount of burst damage that Lee Sin can dish out. This build is a tanky one that gives Lee Sin opportunities to heal his way through mid and late game fights. That covers the jungle builds, so take a look at the screen for a recap. We'll be moving on to the mid lane next. We're starting to see Rise picked more often in the mid lane. In contrast to the more popular phase rush build, we're starting to see more players opt into a tankier, damage based build. Let me go over it before talking about how it works. For runes, you'll take Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Rift Maker, Sorcerer's Shoes, Fimble Winter, Rabadon's Death Cap, Frozen Heart, and Void Staff. The combination of Conqueror and Rift Maker provides Rise with the sustain that he needs to fight his way through survival. More damage means more health, essentially, and he's going to be having plenty of defensive stats thanks to Fimble Winter and Frozen Heart. Taking Legend Tenacity is important here as it allows Rise to quickly get back into fights even after getting locked down for a bit. In spite of the extra defense that this build incorporates, all the items still contribute heavily to Rise's damage output. 
He sacrifices some mobility for more durability, making it easier to pilot for some players. Before moving forward, let me ask you our question of the day. Do you think it makes sense to build a champion differently if it makes him quote unquote easier to play? I personally think so, because I'm a believer in human error. Taking into consideration that you're bound to make mistakes is something that you should consider for pretty much any game. Let me hear your thoughts in the comments below, especially if you disagree. I'd love to read them. That being said, let's move on with the video. Next is a build for Echo. Like the Rise build, it takes a tankier approach without sacrificing damage output. You'll want to take Ignite for the setup as it provides extra kill pressure in teamfights and also lets you get away with not dedicating an item slot for healing reduction. For runes, take Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Shield Bash, Unflinching, Double Adaptive Force, and a defensive rune of choice. Legend Alacrity may seem strange, but you're going to need some attack speed alongside Conqueror to make this build work. His items are Nasher's Tooth, Sorcerer's Shoes, Crossfire Gauntlet, Rabbit on Seth Cap, Void Staff, and Zhonya's Hourglass. Frostfire is a great addition to this build as the slow allows Echo to fit in a lot more auto attacks. Combining Conqueror, Nasher's Tooth, and even the damage from his passive as well as W leads to some insane DPS. With Gauntlet and even Zhonya's Hourglass on hand, Echo is a mobile AP fighter that has no problem getting himself out of tough situations as well. That covers the middle lane build, so once again, we'll throw up the builds up on the screen for you. Next, we have the bottom lane to explore. To begin, we have a build for Brand. This is not a support Brand build. He's a carry with the setup, so take note of that. Taking advantage of the immense poke his W and E brings to the table is crucial. It's super annoying to deal with it, and when paired with an aggressive support, can force enemies to constantly take some unsafe risks if they want to farm. For his runes, take Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Presence of Mind, Coup de Grasse, Double Adaptive Force, and a defensive rune of choice. For items, build Night Harvester, Sorcerer Shoes, Rally's Crystal Scepter, Shadow Flame, Demonic Embrace, and Rabbit on Seth Cap. Especially in late game teamfights, this build allows Brand to deal insane burst damage, as well as burn enemies over time. Moving on to the support build, we have one for Lysandra. This one is more of a support by carrying type of loadout. At the end of the day, however, Lysandra provides an insane amount of crowd control that can fit into nearly any team comp. For runes, take Glacial Augment, Perfect Timing, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Cheap Shop, Ultimate Hunter, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. Glacial Augment's additional slow as well as damage reduction allows Lysandra to better fit the support role. I heavily suggest taking Perfect Timing with the setup as it'll allow you to set up an extremely effective dive in the mid game. With the help of a mid laner or jungler, you can initiate fights under the enemy team's turret, even using your ultimate if you want that extra CC. You'll have Stopwatch to help you drop turret aggro at the last moment and thus can put an immense amount of pressure on your enemies. A lot of the time, they may not even realize that you have it when you're going in for a dive. For items, build Spell Thieves, Everfrost, Sorcerer's Shoes, Zhonya's Hourglass, Shadow Flame, and Rabbit on Seth Cap. Finally, we have a bot lane combo to wrap the video up. The combo is Anivia and Poppy. The clear gimmick that they have going on for them is a combination of Poppy's stun with Anivia's wall. It sets up a free follow-up queue from Anivia, creating a lethal CC chain, and at level 6, you can pile on the damage from her ultimate as well as the additional knockup from Poppy's. As the game progresses, these two champions provide an immense amount of team fighting power and utility that helps any team comp have an edge in brawls. For Anivia's setup, take Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Treasure Hunter, Presence of Mind, Coup de Grasse, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. Her items are Leandri's Anguish, Sorcerer's Shoes, Archangel's Staff, Zhonya's Hourglass, Rabadon's Death Cap, and Void Staff. Poppy's runes are Aftershock, Shield Bash, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Cosmic Insight, Biscuit Delivery, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. For items, take Steel Shoulder Guards, Defensive Boots, Frostfire Gauntlet, Knight's Vow, Dead Man's Plate, and finally Force of Nature. That's it for the bottom lane build, so for the last time in this video, we're putting up the builds on the screen for you guys to take a look at. Thank you guys all so much for watching, and that concludes our Korean builds for Patch 12.19. Like always, feel free to join our Discord community via the link in the description. You'll be the first to learn about any future events or giveaways. Take care, everybody. Best of luck in your games. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.